Hello. I need some abalone for my acoustic guitar build. Now, if you're a regular on this channel, you'll know that I love to save money. And anything I can do to save money, any shortcuts, I will take. So I'm going to see if I can process raw abalone to produce some blanks suitable for inlay. Now, initially I need um, abalone for the rosette, and that's all I'm really going to concentrate on the moment. So I'm only going to um, process just this little area here uh, that I've marked out. Um, but eventually I'll probably need to process the whole of this shell for the whole of the guitar. And here's the point. I worked out it would cost me over £70 to buy processed abalone blanks to do the entire guitar. The logo on the headstock, the fret markers and the rosette. This shell cost me €8, Euros, which uh, used to be quite cheap. Not so much anymore. I bought it from Venice um, earlier in the year, six months ago. Now, I'm not going to be doing it this indoors because it generates a lot of dust. Although the first part I'm going to be doing underwater, cutting out the little uh, blanks um, I'm going to be doing underwater, which will stop the dust. I can, I've got an extension um, for my Proxon router. Uh, but the second bit where I'm thicknessing it and sanding it, a lot of dust. You need to wear a respirator. I don't like respirators, but um, I'm going to have to and I'm going to do it outdoors. All the precautions I can take because the dust from this is really nasty. Um, it's very, very sharp, tiny little bits which are damaging to the lungs. You can end up with silicosis if you um, breathe it in long term. So I'm not going to take any chances. So the first thing to do, get this all cut out and we're going to do it outside. Here's my slightly crude setup. <laughs> Just the, uh, the proxen clamped on the workmate and uh, Splishy splashy. I think this should work though. <laughs> Let's try that again. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, this looks so simple when I saw somebody else do it. Uh, I wonder if there's a way of generating less splash. It's possible I need just more water so I can get this in deep so I can see what I'm doing. Hmm, can't really see what I'm doing. It's respirator time. I, I, made, I made a nice clean cut, but the problem is the refractive index, the, uh, the bending of the light, uh, makes it very difficult to line the cut up because you, can't, you just can't tell where you're going to hit the shell. Um, plus the fact with each cut I make this water is going to get murkier and murkier and I'm just not going to be able to see what I do. If, if you're not so worried about the accuracy of the cut I think this method will work but it's not for me so um, I don't like respirators but here we go. Time for a new cutter. Ah. 
and another new cutter. I've also put ski goggles on to make sure no dust gets in my eyes. <laughs> Stage one complete. It was fairly quick, but I've used six or seven discs, which is something to bear in mind with the cost of this. It might have been cheaper to use the scroll saw, but I don't think it would have been quite so quick. I also broke a couple of discs, which if I'd have been a little bit more careful, um, gentle sweeping strokes rather than just digging in, then I probably wouldn't have broken those discs. But they wear out anyway. I couldn't have avoided using at least five discs. This is 100 grit. It's a little bit old, but I think it should be okay. Now comes the dangerous bit. I've created a, a mini router table and the uh, cutter disc is mounted just over a millimetre clear of the surface. So let's see how we get on. Well, that was scary. The problem with pieces this small is they're just too difficult to hold. And with those big Canadian um, rigger gloves, the big leather gloves, um, I just could, couldn't hold them. So in the end, I was double gloved in latex. And I needed it as well because I did take the end out of one of the fingers 
um, <laughs> during one of the, the closer passes. Uh, fortunately, only the outer glove and certainly my skin wasn't touched. But it's, uh, it's a tricky, it's a tricky method. It's not my idea. Um, I got that method from Luke Mixter. Um, and I guess for thick shell, it's, it, its advantage is you can take the shell off in layers and maybe get several layers out of one piece of shell. But really speaking, the bits need to be bigger in order to hold them properly. And there you get a trade-off, because with the bigger pieces you've got more curvature and you have to take more off to get them flat. So for pieces this size, which I think is optimal for what I want, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's dodgy <laughs> and dangerous. Um, so I'm going to try something maybe just as dodgy, but not uh, dodgy for my health, more the health of my drum sander, because I'm going to put them through the drum sander. And for that, I'm going to have to glue them to a substrate. And the danger is if they come unglued, they could jam and damage the drum. Um, I shudder to think what might happen. Um, they might shoot out at high speed. Who knows? But hopefully they won't come loose. And I'm going to just ease in and just be very, very careful. And we'll see how far we go with this method. So here goes. might be trickier than I thought. Am I going to be able to get these off without breaking them? I thought the whole thing would peel and it's not going to because this really is rather good rather good double-sided tape. Oh dear. going to be some cleanup involved here because they're coming off rather sticky. But they are coming off.
a little bit of white spirit later and uh, success. Um, I'm really pleased with that in the end. It's all worked very well. I've got some beautifully thicknessed little abalone blanks, which are going to be perfect for my guitar. Um, a word about dust extraction. I used a respirator for all of that, even though I've got the, um, the dust extractor on my drum sander, which is very good. But when I took the respirator off, I could smell um, what reminded me of a, a trip to the dentist. <laughs> um, ugh, maybe you can imagine what that smells like. If you smell that, your dust extraction isn't working properly. While I'd had the respirator on, I did not get that smell at all. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so there we go. Um, I now have my abalone. I now have to go and inlay the front of my guitar. The long-running guitar project. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye!